I get to get back to work. Hey, shine like go. They don't want story, man. They want the sound bite. I'm like, no. Looking around like they see you on the mound, they don't see you on the climb. Right? Me and all of mine in the power line. Look at this and what you find. Right? Shoot. Hey, what's up guys? It's Josh. I'm the founder and master electrician here at Empowered Electric and welcome to Empowered Ed. And today, we're looking at what's in my tool bags. So first off is a flathead screwdriver. It's a very common tool. Almost everyone makes them. You can buy them anywhere, but the usages and applications are huge. Whether it's running conduit, taking apart a motor connection, or putting together a panel, a flathead screwdriver is gonna be one of your best friends. The second thing, ooh, watch it, is the number two Phillips head screwdriver. Once again, almost everyone makes them. Them. The only thing I would say is the rubber handle. People will say are electrically rated. I think Klein and Ideal say that, but it's just more comfortable on your hands. You're gonna be using it a lot. There's gonna be no shortage of calluses on your hands, but getting a nice comfortable screwdriver is very important. Next in my tool bag are wire strippers, right? There's about a million different styles. What I like about these Klein wire strippers is the curvature of the handle. They fit nice. You can cut six and 832 screws, which will happen whenever you're installing devices and they go from number eight to I think number 16 sorry number eight to number 18 8 to 18 I should be able to remember that wire size there's some that go much smaller if you're a low voltage or fire alarm person those are yours but these are the ones for you I also like the spring it's a nice little action Next in my tool bag are diagonal cutters. You're gonna need these for really hard torque to cut big wire, to cut multiple wires. That's about their only function, but when you need them, you're extremely glad you got them, diagonal cutters. The next thing are needle nose pliers. You can see that we have a lot of different pliers and tools like that. What's unique about these is reaching into a box to grab wire, trying to pull wire through a panel, grabbing a fish tape, which some of you don't know what that is, but whenever you whenever you need these to get into that hard to reach area, these are gonna be your friends. I, I believe these are eight inch. They make six and five inch needle nose. Stay away from those, get those eight inch long ones. Boom, the electrician's most known tool right here, lineman's pliers. These things are very, very important. They're also very expensive. They're over 30 bucks, but they're worth every single dollar. I got the Klein pair that has the fish tape puller you see right there. That's for pulling fish tape when you're pulling wire and things like that. You're gonna use these tools to make up wires in pigtails, which we've covered. You're gonna use these to pull wire. You're gonna use these for a lot of other things. Sometimes when you don't have a hammer, you're gonna use it as a hammer. People are gonna tell you not to do that. I'm telling you old salty guys, keep those comments in Reddit. Um, moving on. Why do I have another screwdriver, right? This is called a 10 in one. There's a lot of different things. There's 10 in ones, there's eight in ones, there's 16 in ones. What this is, is a money pit. To be honest, this is probably my 55th one of these I've bought. It's nice because there's all these different sizes of Phillips heads. There's different flat heads. You can pull them out and use them as nut drivers. The problem is when you're like me, you're gonna lose all these and you're gonna spend so much money replacing it, you're gonna eventually throw it away and buy a new one. So I own one. I don't know if I would recommend one, but that's in my tool pouch. Moving on to a torpedo level, okay? When you're running conduit, when you're putting a cover plate on a box, you wanna make sure that stuff is level. So you wanna get a nice eight, nine inch torpedo level. The one thing that I'm gonna really point out about this that is a make or break, because you're gonna see one, it's gonna be $7. You're gonna think, why would I buy the $40 one instead of the $7 one? I don't know if it's $40, it's more expensive. It's more expensive because of these earth magnets right here. These earth magnets stick very tight to something. So if you're on a lift or on a ladder 16 foot above the ground and you put this on a piece of pipe and you move it if you don't have those earth magnets what will happen is it flips underneath and falls and then you're climbing down the ladder you're getting down the lift you're it will piss you off spend the extra money and get those earth magnets a nice pair Ah, pliers, I freaking love these. I just got these. So for the longest time I had Craftsman. You can get Irwin makes a good pair. Uh, channel lock, these are commonly referred to as channel lock, but they're not channel lock, channel lock's a brand. These are split joint pliers. And what you can see by these Nipex are they, you have a button that you push that make them bigger and smaller. These are freaking dope, guys. The real thin mouth to get into hard to reach locations. When you're running conduit, a lot of times, compression couplings, you gotta grab them in uh, opposite directions and twist them. Guys, these different pairs of split joint pliers, 
Love them, love them, okay? Moving on to something very, very cool that um, is a very advanced tool is your fluke meter, okay? Fluke, I don't even honestly know who else makes them because to be honest, fluke kind of owns the game. It checks the opacity, it checks continuity, it checks voltage. Do not use this on live or energized parts if you have not been trained. This is not for a DIYer and We'll make a video about it. It's a very, very sensitive, expensive tool. Don't just use it, but that's what's in my bag. A couple last things. A utility knife, of course you need that, right? For cutting tape, cutting open boxes, or um, stripping wire, stripping wire like bigger wire for service wire, things like that. It's more an advanced skill, but a nice retractable uh, utility knife is also. We've got some pencils and Sharpies. They're like 10 cents, guys. Fill up your bag with some pencils and Sharpies. Another tool, you're like, gosh dang, are you an electrician or are you a screwdriver owner? Yeah, we use a lot of screwdrivers. I have, I think this is called a jewelry screwdriver. It's much, much smaller, as you can tell. If that one's a number two, this is also a multi-tool that comes with a lot of different sizes, which we know is what? A freaking money pit, but you're really gonna like this on some of those small motor connections and electronic devices. A reamer, guys, a reamer. I remember one of the very first things I had to buy was an EMT bender and I said, cool, I have an EMT bender, what's EMT? Not only do I not know how to bend it, but I don't know what it is. Well, it's metal pipe that you pull wire through in commercial applications and when you cut that pipe, that metal that where you cut it is really, really sharp and jagged and so you get an EMT reamer to push it in the hole and twist it so that you make it really smooth so it doesn't nick or score wires and cause shorts. Now this right here, sometimes people won't use a reamer, they'll just use their needle nose, jam it into the conduit, turn it, and then they'll use some channel locks to grab it and do that. You see how many, how many times I had to do that as opposed to just using the one tool made for it to twist it and make it really nice. So I think it goes from half inch, three quarter, and one inch, but an EMT reamer is also in my tool bags. All right, so the last thing I have in my pouch is a big set of Allen wrenches. They make these, um, actually Klein makes them for the most common used panel locations. When you're landing wire, it gives you a bunch of different varieties to torque down um, the wires. I like to just keep those in my pouch and I have a plug tester. I always have a plug tester with me, whether it's a commercial site and I'm doing freaking ground rough or I'm in somebody's house. It's just such a handy tool. It's about eight bucks. Every DIYer should own one of these. It's a very, very easy common tool. It's got the GFI trip button, which is very important. If it doesn't have that, don't buy it. But, um, oh my gosh, how in the heck did I forget a Stanley Fat Max tape measure? You're gonna need a tape measure for almost everything you do on a construction site. Do not waste your money on any tape measure other than a Fat Max. Fat Max are the best tape measures. Guys, I know um, I know some of these tools you immediately recognized. Some of them you had no idea why you would ever use them. I try to not load up my tool bags with a lot of other tools. Of course, there are so many tools that you can buy. Power drills and impacts and sawzalls and all sorts of things. That needs to be a video for another direction. If you show up day one on a, con a construction, commercial, electric job site, or a residential job site with the tools that I just showed you, your foreman won't laugh at you, no journeyman will criticize you, they'll all know that you showed up ready to work. Guys, as always, thanks a ton for subscribing, liking, and sharing these videos. We hope they've been helpful. If you're in need of an electrician, reach out in your local area. If you're in Kansas City, reach out to Empowered Electric, 816-500-9452. And that's what's in my bags. What else I got in here? Ooh. All right, what? I don't even want to show that. Stubby screwdriver. I can't wait to edit that later. <laughs> well, it's just a stubby screwdriver. <laughs> Look at that. Why is it called a stubby? <laughs> One of the most important screwdrivers when you're trying to get into a hard to reach area, you gotta use your stubby. All right, why is it called a scubby screwdriver?